It's Nolan. Y'all yeah, niggas, that's that sh I don't like What you calling my phone for? You wasn't there when I was down, right? Now you wanna be all in since my dividends is ballin' I ain't heard from you in a minute Why the hell is you calling? My phone number ain't changed yet But the diamonds is a visible set Call the year with I ain't even started whipping up the grill yet Why you looking all mad for? Why you looking all sad for? I'm just counting up the cash Buying Louis Gucci Fendi in the bags, huh? See me at the mall bar till I fall I don't really wanna talk to you at all When I was struggling, you ain't wanna help at all Now you wanna be involved, now you wanna be my dog Now you wanna be my homie, these niggas so phony I just thought that I should let you know I'm blocking your number, ho My friends call on my phone, I never pick up Y'all never leave me alone, I never pick up Leave a message on the phone, I never pick up Had to get it on my own Smell like a butler hanging on my coattail. Got these chickens clucking like it's H Mart. Rain poetry, got it for wholesale. Ringing doorbells. When you see these on me going hand in hand. Got a bag, then I fumbled it. Four quarter boy was looking like Shanahan. Now I'm stacking up them dividends. G's on me like I'm Dabba Dan. Pockets bulging like them hammer pants. Legendary like I'm Bag of Vance. Turning down these labels, bad advance. Who I'm feeling like a prize. You can see it in my eyes. Takes up my number, won't get no reply. I shake them like grease on the fries. Chains swinging like a clock. Tower. Yeah, I'm super dope, Mr. High Tower. Feeling groovy, boy, I'm monster powers. All this gold shining like a bridal shower. New kicks, I am not a punter, but the numbers running like a Jackie Jonah. Turn my words into fine art. I just drew a reference back to Magna Carta. Warming up like a leather bomber. Now they blowing up my phone. Uh, I just went to with Safari, now they keeping tabs on me. Google Chrome. Uh, down payment on a home. Uh, got the paper making songs. Uh, see these others about to come in now. Cleo, leave a message at the tone. Your fucking kid and play high top looking at ass. Getting on my goddamn nerve looking at ass. Shit. Piss me off. <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid, Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. We're going to have a nice little let's talk session. You know what I'm saying? Because... It's a little bit dry in the news today, but we're going to pull something together. I want to have a conversation with y'all and go over a few things. You know what I'm saying? Hope everyone is doing well. Hope y'all are having a good day thus far. I hope you're having a good week and that you have an amazing weekend coming up. Once again, I want to give a major salute to everybody that's helped us get to that 12K margin so far. As promised, I told y'all when we hit that 12K, I'm going to be working on my live performance show. As of today, I went through my... Went through my uh, my set list, we're going to be working on that. Within the next couple of days, it will be up. I think I'm going to have to uh, pre-record it just on time constraints, dealing with family, dealing with everything that's going on in, in life. You know what I'm saying? I may not be able to go live and do the performance and still be able to provide y'all with the inside the industry show that you're accustomed to getting on a daily basis. So I think I'm going to have to pre-record that and put it out uh, sometime this weekend. It'll be up. Y'all will get the notifications once it's uploaded. Make sure you tune in. Everybody who said that y'all would be willing to donate to the performance, I greatly appreciate it. So hopefully y'all are able to come through with that. I'm not asking for money, but if you're able to contribute, it's always appreciated. So there's that. First thing we're going to get into today is Kendrick Lamar. We talked about him yesterday. We're not going to talk about the content creator thing. I did talk about how he's got his upcoming show, uh, Ken and Friends, out there in L.A. happening this month, I believe, on Juneteenth, if I'm not mistaken. It sounds like those tickets are going for a nice 
know what I'm saying? A pretty penny. I myself won't be there, but anybody on the West Coast, if you're in L.A., if you're in the area, if you've got the funds to fly out, have at it. Go enjoy yourself because I think it's going to be pretty historic. This might be the first time fans get an opportunity to see Kendrick Lamar perform Not Like Us. Hell, he might get out there and fucking perform Euphoria for all we know. That would be crazy. But in other Kendrick Lamar news, this is something that came across my desk today that I thought was interesting. All right. Kendrick Lamar's song, All Right, has costed a school a hundred thousand dollars in a lawsuit settlement this shit is kind of crazy uh never really seen this happen before but let's get right into it man okay out in vernon connecticut that's crazy because i was born in connecticut you know funny how this stuff be happening they say Kendrick Lamar shifted hip hop culture with the release of To Pimp a Butterfly in 2015, though one of the album's standout singles and its accompanying music video has been stirring up a frenzy in the Northeast United States over the past few years. OK. On Tuesday of this week, council members uh, in Vernon, Connecticut, unanimously approved a thousand excuse me, hundred thousand dollar lawsuit settlement to cover the damages pertaining to a case that was filed two years ago. Back in 2020, a social studies teacher at Vernon Center Middle School showed his eighth grade classroom the documentary called Hip Hop Songs That Shook America. Among the subversive material birthed by the longstanding tradition of rap, the film features the visual for K-Dot's All Right, which tackles police brutality and racism in the song and more, more uh, directly in the video. According to a lawsuit filed in 2022, the instructor was aware that one of his students was the son of a law, law enforcement official. OK, this is very important. Um, so seems like one of them students wasn't all that thrilled about the material. It also argued that the video depicted officers as murderers and contained other shockingly violent scenes and controversial statements about police officers because the boy in question had a diagnosed learning disorder and individualized education plan. The plaintiff claimed that the incident caused him emotional and psychological distress. OK, so OK, so based on his learning disability, he was being shown depictions of uh, police officers um, as aggressive, as, uh, you know, brutalizing people in the streets. And of course, there was a discourse in there about how that happens in real life. I'm quite sure they reflected back to the Rodney King and all of that stuff that happened in the 90s, because that's literally what a lot of people have talked about in relation to that song. Of course, it was during the George Floyd stuff and all of that as well, um, that that song definitely grew legs of its own, uh, even before George Floyd. Um even on the heels of uh, Mike Brown and George, I mean, George, uh, Mike Brown and St. Louis and whatnot, um, the song was used as well. But we're going to keep going in the article here. Um, so apparently the child in the, in the class, he's a middle school student, he had some sort of a traumatic response to seeing this uh, film. According to the New Haven Register, this includes post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, shock, confusion, sadness, feeling unsafe, and social withdrawal, some or all of which necessitate psychological treatment and counseling, and if unresolved, pose the risk of severe mental illness, along with physical manifestations that include nausea, headaches, and malaise. The student is also alleged to have been stigmatized for being the child of a police officer, which caused friends and others to dissociate with him, according to the lawsuit. Additionally, legal documents claim that some or all of the aforementioned injuries necessitated change schools and a result of which he has suffered loss and damages. The Board of Education will most likely finalize this settlement next week, considering stu so, excuse me, Superintendent Joseph McCary was at the aforementioned council meeting. He says we always do what's in the best interest of students and each student is different. So each decision is different, but it's always what's best for the kids. Despite the spot of controversy, Kendrick Lamar's all right has otherwise been showered with acclaim thanks in part to it becoming the unofficial anthem of the black lives matter movement and keep in mind the movement not the uh group and the so-called charity you know what i'm saying the accolades continue to roll in last month for kendrick when spotify crowned it the greatest hip-hop song of the streaming era beating out smash hits like Cardi B's Bodak Yellow and Drake's God's Plan. So many wins just racking up for this dude, man. It's crazy. Even when 
Even when others are losing on his behalf, he continues to win. Wow. Oh, man. And on the heels of uh, KDOT announcing his show and all of that good stuff, we've got his arch nemesis, Drake, deciding to delete all of his disses from Instagram. Now, I knew six, uh, the heart part six was deleted. But at the time when the heart part six was deleted, the rest of them were still present. However, Drake decided to double back and delete all remnants of his feud with Kendrick Lamar, at least from Instagram. The songs are still available on streaming and music videos on YouTube. If I'm not mistaken, that would be stupid for him to take those records down. But he's taking it off of his social media. Um, they say Drake has posted a cryptic message online after deleting all his Kendrick Lamar disses from IG. The Canadian superstar quietly removed this song, such as Push Ups, Family Matters, and The Heart Part 6 from the social media platform just yesterday before writing a vague post. Alongside pictures of himself at his Toronto mansion, which has been targeted by trespassers and even a drive-by shooting in recent weeks, Drake wrote, The only yes man around me is my Rolex dealer. It's possible that the post was a response to some of the claims made about his OVO crew by Kendrick, who alleged in his own diss songs that there's a mole in Drizzy's camp, along with numerous S offenders. Drake's decision to remove his diss songs from social media was met with criticism from fans, with many calling him a hypocrite after he previously challenged Kendrick to follow through in their feud. One user posted a screenshot of lyrics from Drizzy's tailor-made freestyle, which he previously was forced to delete after being threatened with legal action from the Tupac estate, where he rapped, You trying to let this shit die down? Nah, nah, nah. Not this time, nigga. You following through. They said that line has officially aged the worst throughout the entire beef. Another person wrote, in my opinion, Drake's best time in this beef was that little moment between push-ups and Taylor made when everyone assumed K-Dot wasn't responding. I think once he realized Kendrick was ready to burn all bridges just to beat him, it wasn't fun anymore, LMAO. The way his tone and shift, excuse me, the way his tone shifted was nuts. Drake is believed to have moved on from the beef and conceded defeat to Kendrick following the release of The Heart Part 6, which was widely criticized by fans and critics for its tone and content. He's also got Wagwan Delilah going on. He's also got that sexy red verse, none of which have been received with massive fanfare. He's looking real funny in the light right now. Not to mention some of the personal jabs, some of the personal information that's being released out there on Drake. Ooh, shit. But that yes man thing he put on IG, the only yes man around me is... My Rolex dealer, you just, you've definitely solidified yourself as one of the corniest niggas in hip hop history, if not the, you know what I'm saying? And that's coming from somebody who's enjoyed your music for the most part throughout your career, but man, oh man, what a life crisis he's got to be going through. Moving forward with the show. We're also going to get into Miss Ice Spice, all right? She came in at number five on yesterday's Billboard Top 10 Females in Rap. I don't know how she made it a top five, but you know what? It's all good. You know what I'm saying? Whatever position everybody got on there, according to Billboard, you deserve it. You earned it, you know? Um, she's got her new album, Y2K, on the way. The album cover has been released, and unfortunately, it's getting clowned by fans and folks that fuck with her, too. I think it's being unanimously panned right now. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the album cover so y'all can see it in, if you haven't already. So this is Ice Spice's Y2K album cover. It looks like she's standing outside of uh, the train station, the subway station out there in New York, presumably in the Bronx. Um, and... The album cover, the album title Y2K is written on a fucking trash can. Oh my God. If that is not foreshadowing, if that is not some goddamn. <laughs> oh my God. I don't give a fuck how terrible you are as an artist. You should never write your album title on a fucking trash can and look like Oscar the Grouch is finna crawl up out that bitch with a. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Ice 
guys. Who is guiding you? Get up. The goddamn booty shorts cannot save this. And of course, she's got her name signed in Sharpie marker. Oh, man. Not a good look at all. I I personally believe the album will be trash. But when you got the artist themselves putting their album title on a trash can. Can't do nothing but feel bad for them. I don't know who approved this. I don't know. Ain't she signed the Capitol? You mean to tell me everybody at the label had meetings about this shit, went through the fucking uh, the assets and said, this is it? Fire everybody. They say Ice Spice's Y2K may be one of the most anticipated rap albums of the year. That is a fucking lie. But fans aren't enthused about its art direction. The Bronx rap star unveiled the project's cover on Wednesday with the image depicting her flaunting her derriere in front of a street wall with her rap name scribbled over her in graffiti. The artwork features other nods to her New York City roots, including a custom subway sign and Metro card, along with a trash can tag with the name of her album. The cover was quickly trashed, all pun intended, by fans on social media with one writing. Y2K could have been a futuristic take. Like, how did we miss it? This looks like Ghetto Sesame Street. <laughs> God damn. Sesame Chicken Street. Another joke. Maybe putting a title on the trash can wasn't the best idea. Someone else picked out more nuanced flaws with the cover. Nah, this is actually making my graphic designer brain hurt so much, they said. The signature is placed so badly in that blend mode choice. Laughing my arse off. A fourth user offered a more measured assessment writing. I'm sorry, it's way too important of a time for women in hip hop. Probably the most important time in the history of the culture to go out sad when it comes time for album cover art. At this point, he lumped in Ice Spice's Y2K cover with the recently revealed artwork for Megan Thee Stallion's upcoming album, Megan, which I also did not enjoy. I thought that it was not good. Um, I felt like it was a very hard left turn based on all of the snake theme that we got from... Um, from Cobra to his to Boa. How the hell are we going with this snake theme all the way up into the album cover? And then we come out as a goddamn caterpillar butterfly cocoon. What is going on in the meetings? You know, I will say Megan's looked better. But I didn't like that shit at all. Still stand by the idea that the Boa covers that y'all put all that work into to make eight of them or however many it was should have just been the fucking album. We'll keep going though. Um, Ice Spice's cover as well as Megan's. Wow. So they were done by the same person. Ice Spice's cover as well as Megan's was photographed by the legendary David LaChapelle, who also shot the cover for Travis Scott's Astro World, as well as portraits of Tupac, Eminem, Kanye West, Andre 3000 and more. And you just took it upon yourself to sabotage the album covers of two of the most important, even if you love them or hate them, two most important, two of the most, not the two most. Let's just keep it there. Women in hip hop today just sabotage their album covers at the most pivotal parts of their careers. Ain't that about a bitch. David LaChapelle, I don't give a fuck about none of that classic shit you did. You deserve your ass whipping expeditiously. In addition to releasing a new album on July 26th, so that's the album date, July 26th, the Princess Diana rapper will also be hitting the road in support of Y2K. Okay, so she finna do the tour. Hold up, wait a minute. That's that's kind of fire. I ain't going to lie. The ladies is hitting the road for the tour. I, oh, man, I hate that your tour promotion is the same fucking thing. Goodness gracious. Boy, 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 boy. So she's taking uh, Bronx native Cash Cobain on the tour. It will be kicking off in July in Denmark. So they're starting the tour overseas and i guess they'll make their way back to the states that's a very interesting uh 
itinerary. It's going to be 24 dates. This is a world tour. It will take, like I said, uh, she's jumping it off in Denmark. It will take her through Europe on a few festival dates. She'll then head back to the United States where she'll hit major cities such as Philadelphia, New York, Washington, D.C., and more before wrapping up in Miami this August. Her in-house producer and boyfriend, whoa, was that, was this actually confirmed? Y'all going to put this on a publication and it's her boyfriend? Did she say that? Did Riot say that? We've only heard from Baby Storm. We'll also be on her tour as her DJ. Go DJ. And I'm a DJ. That shit takes on a whole new meaning. Wow. They say Ice Spice has been in album mode for a while now, releasing a string of singles, including Pretty Girl with Rima that I never heard. Thank you to shit the fart. Uh, aimed at Lotto and the Sean Paul sampling Give Me a Light where she was screaming on that motherfucker like the mic was not working. Man, oh man. She has also been sharing insight into the project, such as crediting her mother with inspiring the nostalgic turn of the millennium theme. She says, thankfully, I had my mom. So growing up, I'd see her really embody the Y2K aesthetic in its truest form. She said in an interview with Zane Lowe earlier this year. It's duck nails. It's a tramp stamp. It's brown lip liner no matter where you go. So thankfully, I had her as my inspo growing up. And of course, just like the Internet, you feel me? Just like anyone else. Y2K will serve as Ice Spice's second bundle of songs following last year's Like EP. All right. I do want to give some love and light to Ice Spice. I know we went kind of hard on her here. Deservedly so with that terrible album cover. The music that she's been dropping isn't great. I've I've been an advocate on that. <laughs> I guess I'm not an advocate. <laughs> Maybe I'm a detractor. But for her human right to be an artist, for her human right to go out there and do a world tour, do big shit, make money for her music, have a fan base of people that are advocates, I think that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? So... It's not my job to completely dump on people. I'm going to give my opinion, but also try to show love at the same time if I can. Some people might say that's fake love. Some people might say those are backhand compliments. That's your interpretation, not mine. I just want to acknowledge people's humanity. Uh, moving on in the show. We're going to get to Little Dirk. Little Dirk came out to talk about kicking drug habit. Saying he went to rehab. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Excuse me. Lil Durk has revealed that he recently went to rehab to turn his life around after becoming hooked on Xanax and Lean. A Chicago rapper opened up about his past drug addictions and successful journey to get clean in a new interview with TMZ. Explaining his motivations to go to rehab, Dirk said, it helped me a lot. I want people to not run from it or be shy from it. It was tough at first, but it ain't that tough because I really knew what I wanted. I knew what was holding me back. I wanted better. I wanted to be a better man, a better father, a better leader. I'm thinking clearer. My main goal is peace, being with the family and staying out of the bullshit. OK, the 31 year old also opened up about his mental state before going to rehab. He said he was moving fast, making excuses. He was letting the drugs take him over like the codeine, the Xanax, but it does not make him. He says, I just see myself staying on the right track and trying to change a lot of lives. This is for the youth, for the older people who want to do better and feel like they embarrassed or like people going to talk bad about them. Dirk went into more detail about his plans to help other recovering addicts, particularly in his hometown. He says in Chicago, I want to build a rehab facility because I know what it did for me. I know it could help a lot of people. He said, which add, excuse me, he said, adding that he hopes to work with local politicians to tackle issues such as drug addiction and gang violence. OK. They say the OTF founder previously spoke about his drug use on recent single Old Days where he rapped. I miss the old days, the old ways. My history iconic. I was taking so many pills. I was so high. I really abused it. Started selling perks. I turned around and started to use it. Dirk is also credited with helping save the life of collaborator OTF Duty by paying $100,000 for his own rehab stint. Okay. So. 
I definitely support Lil Durk and getting clean, going off and doing the things that he needed to do to save himself, to get himself on the right track. It wasn't that long ago. Lil Durk had canceled uh, quite a few shows from his tour, canceled the second half of his tour due to dehydration and exhaustion. He didn't give us the real reason as to why he was so dehydrated and exhausted, but I'm quite sure him going to rehab shortly after that had something to do with it. So I'm glad that he's getting himself clean. I'm sure by the next time he goes back on tour, he'll be feeling a lot better. He'll be able to do better in front of his fans, put on the show that they pay for, that they deserve. And I'm all for black men healing themselves and coming out better on the other side, especially when you got kids, especially when you want to be there for your family. You know, you don't want to drag your loved ones down with you because you can't get over some shit. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot of children have horrible experiences when they're when their parents are hooked on narcotics, you know. Introduced to a lot of trauma and pain that's not necessarily um, shit, not necessary to their livelihood, you know. So shout out to Dirk for having the maturity to go ahead and get that handle, get it handled. Shout out to him looking out for his boy, putting him in the process. So I think that's dope. I hope he does stay out of trouble. I hope he's able to kind of break some of those old street ties if they're still looming and lingering so that he can move on, not be attached to that shit, not to be attached to the dark shit, the dark past. We don't come all this way, get involved in music and entertainment and try to provide generational wealth for our families just to to toss the shit back out or to not fulfill that shit because of extenuating circumstances that could have been avoided so again salute to Dirk speaking of people looking out for their homies we're gonna get into Oskino from State Property some of y'all may not know who Oskino is some of y'all might not know what or who State Property is but if you were around in the early 2000s mid 2000s you would very well know who these people are that I'm talking about. They were signed to Rockefeller Records. They were associated with Jay-Z. He was the one that put them on the map, looked out for these guys. You know what I'm saying? Particularly Beanie Siegel. Um, Oskino from State Property has a new interview out where he's talking about Jay-Z and the fact that he was so disappointed that Jay-Z did not help Beanie Siegel at a very critical time. All right? There was a part, there was a part in uh, Beanie's career where he was on trial for an attempted murder. And I guess, you know, there were a lot of people associated with the label that took the stand and gave character um, character witness assessments, saying good things. Jay-Z was among those people saying good things about him. However, when he was asked whether or not he would be held responsible for Beanie Siegel to help him get out, Jay-Z said no. Y'all not holding me accountable for anything of this man. You know what I'm saying? His actions. He's proven himself to be a live wire. He's on trial for attempt murder. No way. Beanie Siegel was disappointed at the time. Oskino to this day in 2024 is still disappointed. Let's go ahead and pull up his interview and hear what he had to say about the situation, shall we? Y'all give me a second. I mean, but do I really say what I saw, bro? I saw, I came to court for beans, right? When he shot that, Pussy shot, allegedly shot somebody. Jay Z got on the stand. They said, yo, are you going to be responsible for him if we let you go? Jay Z said, no. Wait, nah. What, what year was this? Bro, I was there. I was there. My son was little, so this is probably like early 2000s. Yeah. I was, I was there. This, this, this ain't hearsay. This is me there in the courtroom. So wait, wait. The judge asked Jay Z, "Would he be responsible Bean, for beans? Yeah, if, would you be responsible if we let him go today? Would you be responsible for him?" He said, "No, no." Is this before the success, or is this af- after the beans Bean, success? Bean, Bean, he was beans. He was already did the songs and all that. Yeah, he was success. Yeah, success already. And what he said, I, I, I was just thinking, like, what did he come to court for then? If you're not going to, you're going to say that, like, mind you, this is my thing. If I got a homie, all I got to do is say I'm responsible for him to get out. I'm saying it every time because. If he kills somebody, something, they, they can't charge me with it. I mean, plus I got enough money to put him up somewhere anyway if, if I wanted to. But like, the judge basically just giving up, trying to give him an out to be able to get out. Just say, yeah. He said, no, bro. And I said, and nobody didn't say nothing. Nobody didn't flinch. It. I'm looking, my I'm a jail nigga, so I'm looking like, what? Nobody not appalled? Nobody not saying that? Like, it was normal. Well, you know, he don't want to be responsible for a grown. 
Bro, he not gonna really have to be. The, the, it's no way in the law that say, well, if you say responsible for me, get out and do something. I'm gonna charge you. You can't be charged with nothing. You know what I'm saying? He just said no, like no, nigga, I'm not fucking with you. Like, so I just be like, yo, I always, always thought maybe I was too street in my thinking. Maybe I'm just too street and I don't understand. Like, you know, him being maybe he's being more responsible than I'm capable of knowing about. But I just looked at it like, man, these balls is different. My thing is, don't don't come to court for me if you're gonna say that. I mean, like, yo, yo you gonna let Ko come out? Sure, wait, can can. We, we responsible for skin. We let him out today. No, I'm like nigga. What the fuck you come to court for? What you come to court for then? But I mean, what's the point of you getting on the stand? This was on the stand. I said, what the fuck was that? So you know, I left. So I just did not say nothing before because I didn't know if I was thinking correct. I mean, I still don't think you're thinking correct. But let's go back in time, shall we? Let's go back in time. MTV News, Shaheem Reed. Shout out to Shaheem Reed. He's been doing good work for a very long time. He's still out here doing, you know, stuff periodically. He wrote this article July 4th, 2003. He says, Beanie Siegel arrested, charged with attempted murder. Rapper accused of shooting a man outside of a Philadelphia bar. So this is the incident that got him locked up, which led to the incident that Oski knows talking about. They say Beanie Siegel is behind bars facing attempt murder charge after turning himself into police Thursday night in Philly. The Rockefeller recording artist and leader of the state property click surrendered around 11, 15 p.m. shortly after performing with Jay-Z on the Rock the Mic tour. The arrest stems from an incident on Tuesday when the rapper allegedly fired approximately six shots from a silver nine millimeter at a man in front of Philadelphia's ponytail go-go bar. One shot is said to have struck the man in the foot and another in the stomach. Police have not released the name of the victim, who is also a resident of Philadelphia. An investigator on the case said, Sino, said Siegel knew the man he is accused of shooting for several years, and witnesses have told police that the two were shaking hands shortly before the incident. According to authorities, the victim walked outside the ponytail close to 1 a.m. on Tuesday when he got into an argument with two women. Siegel allegedly pulled up in a Cadillac Escalades moments later. Police said the rapper asked the women who? And after they pointed to the victim, the MC is said to have opened fire. Now that's interesting. That's an interesting incident. I didn't know all the details back when this happened. I was still in high school. I was, you know what I mean? I was living my life trying to figure the fuck what, what I had going on. So I don't know what the issue is. It sounds like Ponytail might be a strip club. They're calling it a go-go bar. Um, uh, Sounds like these women might possibly be uh, either strippers or just uh, patrons at the go-go bar. But if he pulls up and they say who and he says who, it's like they basically came to him in grief. You know what I'm saying? With some sort of grievance about this guy. He said who? Like who did this? Who knows what he was doing? He said it was some sort of argument. I don't know if he was trying to get to the cookies or what. But he says who? Next thing you know, <laughs> shots fired. So perhaps he was actually doing this in defense of these women. That is a very interesting way to go down. That's that's almost Tupac-like, if I must say so myself. But let's keep going. The investigator said the victim was in grave condition after the shooting, even losing his vital signs at one point. He was rushed to the hospital at University of Pennsylvania and is listed in critical condition. This is in 2003, by the way. Siegel's lawyer and mother negotiated with police to allow the rapper to perform at the Rock the Mike Philadelphia stop Thursday night before turning himself in. Besides the attempted, Siegel also faces charges of aggravated assault, simple assault, and possession of a criminal instrument. Siegel and his representatives could not be reached for comment. Now, if he was in possession of a criminal instrument, that probably means he shouldn't have had it. You know, some of y'all may know, some of y'all may not. Beanie Siegel was a convicted felon for a very long time. He took the cops to war, allegedly, out there in Philadelphia. So he's been a live wire, hula hoop, bob wire for quite some time. Those are lyrics from him, by the way. Um, So... I mean, if you out there just popping at people, I don't understand how you expect somebody in the music business, the entertainment industry to back you up. But of course, the rap game was different back then. The standard was different. And of course, the way people looked at the crews in rap was a lot different at that time. But let's listen to Beanie Siegel actually speak on the situation because he had an interview with Nori on Drink Champs. Drink Champs is very hard to listen to, almost intolerable, but we're going to do it for the sake of this video. Please bear with me, y'all. Let's keep going. Uh, 
there's this rumor that one time that Jay got on the stand or whatever, and they asked him, um, would you be responsible yeah. for beans? And he said, no. Yeah. It, that's the truth? Absolutely true. Mm. So, what, what mind state does that put you in? Did that put you, because there's two things that I'm thinking you could think. Damn, this dude is foul, or now as an older person, you could probably say, you know what, well, I was a little out of control, maybe I gotta take account of it. But at that time, I'm sure you wasn't thinking like that. What, what was going through your mind? At that time, it was, all right, put it like this. Rockefeller Records was the only thing that I've ever been a part of that I thought was honest. Still, still, yeah. Like, niggas really fucked with right. me right. for what it was. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I was, I'm from South Philly, so, right. you know what I mean? Niggas smile, shake your hand, you know what I mean? Right. Pray next to you, turn yeah. around, blow your head off. Right. Like, you said smile, shake your hand, pray next to you, and burn, blow your head yeah. off. Yeah, all that vicious. That's right. where I come yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. They kill you, wash your body. Right. You know what I mean? Pray, kill your son and fornicate with your daughter. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's where I come from. Right. That's the world that I that I lived in. Right. So me being with Rockefeller, the loud familiar, I held on to that. It's like I got something, and you know what I mean? And it's like, these niggas got me. And they don't want shit from me. They just want me to do this. Right. It's music. They right. got me. Right. And that's all I ask. You got me. Right. That's where I came from. I never looked at me having a career. I never looked at the business. It was La Familia, La Familia, La Familia. We are family. All you had to do, you got me. So at that time, when, uh, you know, I'm going to court, and we on, we about to be on tour. We on tour. So- A whole nother tour. Yeah, we on, we on a whole nother tour. So, you know, I'm, I'm going for my bail hearing and the feds, and, the judge asked Jay, you know, everybody saying all these good things and all that, you know what I mean, the character witnesses, Dame, and you know, everybody saying, and even Jay said a whole lot of good things about me, and the judge was gonna let me go, monitor. And she said, you know, would you be willing, and that's the part that people don't have, would you be willing to be responsible for his whereabouts? not be responsible for my actions. Just his whereabouts. Would you be willing to do that? Provide us with all the information, you know, saying that he's gonna be here, there, there, there. Mm. And after all that good shit, and he said no. But it was like the way he said it, and he put his head down, he was like, no, I've never been crushed like that ever in my life. Cause I'm like, damn, this is my man. Like I, and I looked at it at the, I looked at it like, all right, no, nigga, what if I had to get the fuck out of there? I'm in jail. I, I'm still tall, all my shit. But what if I really needed to go? This was going to my mind. Like, like get out of jail. You say? Like yeah, like bro, I had attempted murder. And in the state and the federal gun charge and all this shit. The 40 years is over. <coughs> this is what I'm facing 40 years. Right. What if I, and my mom thinking like, damn, what if I really need the room? Be on a run and go. Like I'm from like, this is my man and I love him. If he skipped that, nigga, no, I'm getting my man. I'm getting him out by any means necessary. So for, me to, to look him in his eyes and I'm sitting, I'm shackled. Round the wrist, ankles and everything, and the man was like, oh. Like that was that that I don't like that was just fuck. That was that fucked me up. It took everything in me not to like let him go. Like that was like that was that took away a lot of shit that I thought that right. that we had. Right. Like that's right. big bro. All right, so that is Beanie Siegel talking about how he felt at the time when Jay-Z said, no, I would not be responsible for his whereabouts, actions, you know what I'm saying, where he's supposed to be, none of that type shit, nigga. 
I can't do it. And I'm going to be honest, as much as it probably hurt Beanie Siegel, hurt other people in that courtroom to witness that, I can't say I blame him, especially if you want to look back at history. Um, I believe he was arrested in 03. I'm sure. I think the trial was going on 04, 05-ish, around the time that Beanie Siegel dropped the uh, the album The Becoming, I think 04, because the album came out 05 while he was actually already locked up. Um, and Jay-Z was drifting away from his partners at Rockefeller any fucking way. He was drifting away from everybody. He was about to make his move to become the international businessman mogul that he always wanted to be. So if I'm putting myself in his position and it's like, all right, I'm not seeing eye to eye with my business partners that I came up with this company from the ground up with. We're not on good terms, right? I recently went on vacation. This nigga Dame all of a sudden wants to make Cameron the president of the company for some shit we never even talked about, nigga. This is the company that the three, the, this was a three-headed monster that started this company and you start appointing niggas positions without consulting me? I bet. But then you're screaming on the executives at Def Jam, when I'm taking meetings with them, talking about things, you want me to be held to the standard of being an artist under your label. You're taking offense to that, but you're doing shit, not consulting me about it. All right, bet. So there's a double standard there, even though we're actually equals when it comes to the company. Right. Jay-Z is getting offers from Def Jam, from other companies to be like, yo, we'll pay you X amount of money. Come over here. We'll give you a position. We'll give you this. He negotiated getting his master's back in order to take that uh, president of Def Jam job. You know what I'm saying? So he had some shit going on. He was meeting with the with the big dogs, the big wigs, the motherfuckers that's looking out for Drake today. Those types of folks, the Doug Morrisons, the Leors, the uh, the Lucians. Those motherfuckers was looking out for Jay at one point at that, at that time. So he was planning his escape to be his own man, which led him on this path to being becoming a billionaire. I got these street rappers that I've signed. These niggas can't seem to stay out of fucking trouble. These niggas don't want to elevate. I was a street rapper myself at one point, but I'm starting to refine myself, nigga. I told y'all we ain't doing jerseys. I'm 30 plus. Give me a crisp pair of jeans, nigga. Button ups. S dots on my feet. Nigga, I told y'all where I'm at with it. And you think I'm going to help you? You think I'm going to have my name on the hook when you got to attempt murder? The only thing I'm trying to attempt is how to get a motherfucking billion dollars out this shit, man. <laughs> I'm attempting to leave you niggas. I'm attempting to murder my old self and become a new. <laughs> Ain't no fucking way. So, you know, all is well that ends well. I think Beanie Siegel uh, at this current point in life understands what's going on, especially with his uh, his Islamic faith. I think he understands he has to take accountability for his actions. He had to sit down and take that time. But I understand where he was coming from as well. Unfortunately, when you get into the music business, this is not the place where you should be looking for friends. This is not the place where you should be looking for people to replace your family. This is not the place where you should be looking for somebody that's going to take the fall for you or with you in a life or death situation that finds yourself in front of a judge. This ain't where you come for that. Right? You could have joined the boys club for that shit. <laughs> Goddamn. You could have you could have joined Farrakhan for that. But um, you know, that's that's my assessment of the situation. Oskino, you know, um wishing him all the best. He's been through a lot of traumatic things in his life. Uh, losing a child uh, within, the, within the last year or so, excuse me. I know the grief on that has to be overwhelming, has to be crazy. So I do wish him the best. 
I also wish Beanie Siegel the best. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I think he's still trying to recover his voice from uh, years ago. So, shit, man. I grew up listening to Beanie Siegel. Love Beanie Siegel. I still play his music to this day. And the authenticity in his music definitely sounds like it was real. But therein lies the problem. It was too real. And you don't, yeah. hey man, niggas is not finna put their ass on the line unless they got something to gain from it. There's a that's not that's a lose lose. I'm already trying to leave you niggas. Why would I cheat? Why would I keep you around when the objective is to jump ship anyway? Y'all are making this easier for me. Some of Jay's other people that were locked up before. You know, during his rise to fame, they've now become part of his staff at Rock Nation. He's helped them clean up their lives. They took their time. Uh, Emery took his time. Didn't ask for no favors. Got out. This motherfucker is, uh, I think, an executive over at Puma now. Due to his connection with Jay. I know Rock Nation, everybody at Rock Nation had a Puma deal. Rihanna had a Puma deal. Meek Mill had a Puma deal. Jay-Z had a Puma deal. I think he was very vital in Nipsey Hussle getting the Puma deal. Them niggas don't even wear Pumas no more. Trying to tell you, man. Y'all can bullshit with rap if you want. Let me know what y'all think about this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. We're going to have much more content on the way. Hopefully the game continues to get even more interesting as the month continue so we can have these conversations about other things you know what i'm saying other pertinent information and keep an eye out for the upcoming live show i promise by this weekend it will be up for y'all okay no more procrastos it's on the way we hit 12k i gotta stick to it all right much love and respect i see y'all in a minute peace King of my city in cul de sac. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they doubted me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my I came back with some battery, stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.